worship on this uh, sixth Sunday of Pentecost. I'm glad you can all join us on this beautiful day. And uh, just have a few announcements I want to share with you. Uh, first, a special welcome to our instrumentalist for the day, Mark Sands, who uh, will be playing a um, piece on uh, saw, uh, harmonica, and nose part. Is it? When I came into Jerusalem, the one thing is we had to find musical resources and figure out the way and the style in which we will worship, never knowing that when I prayed about asking for resources, I would be getting um, such musical talent as a saw and a nose harp and a harmonica. Um, but I heard the piece, and it was beautiful. Thank you, Mark, for being with us today. Uh, first of all, I also want to welcome my uh, brother and sister in law, uh, Steve uh, and uh, Nancy. We were up late, late last night talking about the church and home church and what it means to be the people of God. And we think we have it all figured out. We just got to share it all with you in the coming weeks. Pastor Melinda is away um, again uh, for her second week of continuing education at the uh, Luther Academy of the Rockies, studying um, uh, outdoor ministry and also uh, rural ministry with some folks there. Warmford Seminary, and so um, she will be returning um, uh, next Sunday. And, uh, we will um, welcome her back. In that process with Linda, also, she is in the midst of discerning um, with us her call to, do, to uh, our church, and uh, council is needing to more of kind of lay out a timeline and uh, some kind of goals for that discernment process. As we may not all be aware, is, uh, she has a term call, which means that. Um, her call would um, functionally end at the time that our uh, past, pastor, Pastor Soli, resigned. And so for her to continue in her call, we have to discern what that means as a congregation and how that we would move forward that. So we want to keep you informed and then pray about that not in the coming months. Our radio broadcast this morning is in honor of Steve and Kathy Nelson on their 40th anniversary, which is today. So a blessing for us. We also want to lift up in prayer, and I've been thinking about through my sermon today, you will come to understand that we um, are with families who have lost loved ones this week and mourn and pray and are walking with beside them on that journey to the family and friends of Elaine Ahmed, whose funeral was here yesterday, to the family and friends of Ken Troll, my brother of Violet Bobby, um, whose funeral was Friday. And then um, for um, my former congregation, we've been mourning the loss of Zella Spray, who uh, was 74 and married for uh, 94 and uh, married for 74 years. Uh, they were wonderful people, um, very active in the church, and uh, two former pastors from the community came and provided services for her. And I just thought, you know, in the midst of um, the changes, you know what it's like to um, be journeying with a uh, community uh, when you have only full of supply and then try to figure out how to manage so I pray for uh, my former congregation, uh, the Jerusalem Christian Church. As I scan, I don't see a lot of our uh, children from BPS um, here today, but if there are any who, or just any who feel bold enough to sing with me, our came of the day, and um, we were great and invited to come forward. Um, it's actually one of the conversations we had last night around the table is um, we go to my former church, and I was confirmed that, and there are many who do that they do on Sundays. Uh, very sad. That's just the way it is. But we can change because God wants us all to be here and, uh, and our kids want to experience the gifts that we have in the sanctuary. So um, we'll just let them know that we're going to sing loud and proud, and when they come back, they can join us, right? So that's, that's the plan. So join me as we sing together our opening hymn.
communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You are the treasured people of the Lord. Keep the words of the Lord in your heart. Teach them to your children. One does not live by bread alone. Praise. Throw back our fields. First reading is from First Kings, the nineteenth chapter. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. 
said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Then Elijah said to him, Go back again, for what I have done to you. He returned from following him, took the yoke of oxen, and slaughtered them. Using the equipment from the oxen, he boiled their flesh and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then they set out and followed Elijah and became his servant. Word of God, word of life. Today's psalm, Psalm 16, will be spoken responsibly, beginning with the women, followed by the men in bold. And he 
sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered the village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But they did not receive him, because he had set his face toward Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. And then they went on to another village. And as they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. And he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own head. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first let me say farewell to those in my home. Then Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the bottom and goes back is fit for the kingdom of God. The last of the
Is Jesus saying to mourn the loss, celebrate their life, and make preparations for a proper burial unimportant? Is this not one of the more important things we do as brothers and sisters in Christ? To care for one another in times of grief? I think pausing to honor the passing of a loved one, to celebrate their life, and to proclaim the promise of the resurrection is all about proclaiming the kingdom of God. In a world where so many struggle to find faith, so many despair, especially after the loss of a loved one, to pause and to pray for and share in this hope and resurrection promise is to witness one of the greatest promises of the kingdom of God. So I don't think Jesus was saying we should ignore our grief and loss at a time of losing a loved one. It was Jesus, after all, who, upon hearing the death of his good friend Lazarus, wept bitterly and decided his death was unacceptable. And told the mourners to roll over the stone and call for Lazarus to come out of the tree. That was very much a central mission for him on earth to conquer death. And that is what we're looking for. But there's also this problem of sin. Jesus was baptized in the Jordan and he was tempted, or we could say distracted, by sin. In the wilderness. He was there for 40 days, figuring out what he was called to do in his earthly life. The devil wanted to entice Jesus to care mostly about caring for his own needs, or to gain more power. Fall down and worship me on this mountain, and the kingdom will be yours. But Jesus told Satan the kingdom was not his gift. Then the devil realized Jesus could not be distracted or tempted, and he departed from him until an opportune time. So there is this battle moving in our Gospels daily. But after leaving the wilderness and coming to his hometown of Galilee, he went on to preach the good news to the poor and proclaim release to the captives, give sight to the blind. Free the oppressed and tell them of the coming kingdom of God. He traveled from one place to another, sharing and acting on his ministry to feed the hungry, heal the sick, cast out demons, preach, raise the dead, and gather disciples, teaching them how to do this kingdom building work. So today we hear the days were drawing near for him to be taken up. So he set his face to Jerusalem. As much as Jesus had cared for the needs of those he had met in Galilee, there was more that needed to be done. Jerusalem, after all, was the empire, the center of civil and religious power. The peace and stability of the region came at a very high price, and the people were oppressed. Rome and the religious authorities had made this unhealthy alliance. And the losers were the average citizens who were daily living out their day to day existence with little hope or friends. We remember John the Baptist had been out in the wilderness proclaiming the kingdom of God is coming near. But Herod had silenced his voice. And that's how high the stakes were when Jesus decided to set his face for Jerusalem. When we hear about Jesus setting his face towards Jerusalem, we are to understand he is preparing to face opposition from both religious and civil authorities that wielded the public power. This system of injustice has to be changed. Jesus could continue to care for all the needs of the individuals he had encountered throughout his earthly life. That could have been the whole of his ministry. But he knew there was more that had to be done. There was this other pressing need to change 
the structures and challenge the powers that cause all this loneliness in the world. Think about that image of the one who sets out to plow a field and continues to look back at the furrow he has cut. Fails to look ahead to see where he should be going. If one only looked back as they plowed, they would be plowing in circles. But Jesus set his face to Jerusalem and tell his disciples to be about the work of proclaiming the kingdom of God. That was the focus. We come to understand that the stakes are very high. This is not work for the faint of heart. So the journey of Jesus sometimes is some scary and dangerous places. When we are thinking, there are so many other things we need to take care of. And you and I feel overwhelmed and distracted by so much that is going on in the world. Thanks be to God. Jesus came into the world and was not distracted, was not tempted to do something else. He showed us the way, never altered or turned away. The kingdom is ours for all. With his compassion for others and his singular voice and resolve to set his face to Jerusalem, he conquered the powers of sin, death, and the devil. And this is good news. It is finished, Jesus said to the cross. To the one hanging beside him, he said, Today you will be the one of your cross. And to all who stood watching, he said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. And through his life, death, and resurrection, we know as the Roman centurion proclaimed. This morning as the Son of God. This is the moment we are all the time.
gospel of your salvation. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith.
Let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Anointing God, who commissioned us for ministry in your life, you also call us to profess our faith and ministry to the next generation. Inspire us in our equipping of others, Lord, in your mercy. God of creation, you have given us all we need. Inspire us to honor your creation as an inheritance and a trust. Lord, in your mercy. God of the nations, the distractions of the world draw our attention, our attention away from you. Refocus us in our commitment to your ways and to the justice you desire for the world. Lord, in your mercy. Through the fruits of the Spirit, make us healers of the world. Bring love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control into the lives of all of you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Steadfast God, you guide this congregation by your spirit. Make us neighbors to each other, ready to lead and to deceive strangers, and show us how to love our neighbors as you can. Lord, in your mercy. God, who have called the saints your time. Gather us with them in your Lord, in the promise of life forever with you. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting your promise to hear us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and in your justice.
on this day. Let's go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.